10, 11, and 12, we're having conditional probability. And so when they do conditional probability, they're saying, given I know this is true, what's the probability the second thing happens? At a certain college, 51% of the students are female, and 19% of the students ma major in civil engineering. Furthermore, 10% of the students are both female and major in engineering. So, what we're going to do is take the both and divide it by the one that's the given part of my problem. For example, if we look at part A, what is the probability that a randomly selected civil engineering major is female? So, in this case, we know that this is the given thing, we know that they are female, and we want to find what percent are civil engineering majors. So what we're going to do is take the probability of both, which is the 10%, and divide it by the probability of the females, which was 51%. These ones, we are going to round your answer to two decimal places. Get, what was that? Is it point, um, point 20. Zero. Yep, that's what I got. Point 20. Okay. Second part of this. What is the probability that the randomly selected female student majors in civil engineering? Again, this is the given part of it. We know they major in civil engineering. We want to find which ones are female. So, again, the top number is the both. The both is 10%. The bottom number is the civil engineering, which was 19%. So I'm going to take 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.19. 0 0.53. 0 0.53. Now, some of the times they're a little nicer because they use the word given right in the problem. <laughs> Given that senior citizens suffer from anxiety, what is the probability that he or she also suffers from a sleep disorder? So we are going to take the both, which is 5%, divided by the given part of it, the given part of it that is that they suffer from anxiety. So the anxiety is going to go on the bottom of that first one, which is the 8%. And we would get, so rounding to two decimal places, 0 0.63. 0 0.625, 0 0.63. The part B of that, find the probability that a senior citizen suffers from anxiety given that they have a sleep disorder. Both goes on top. So the both is the 5%. The sleep disorder is the given part of that, which was 92%. 92% suffer from sleep disorders, right? Rounding that off to two decimal places, I'm going to have 0.05. Or my answer. Number 12 then, it is estimated that during the past year, 27% of all adults visited a therapist and 44% of all adults used non-prescription antidepressants. It is also estimated that 22% of all adults both visited a therapist and used a non-prescription antidepressant during the year. Part A. What is the probability that an adult visited a therapist during the past year given 
that he or she use non-prescription antidepressants. So on the top of my fraction, I'm going to use the point .22, which is both. On the bottom of my fraction, I'm going to use the point .44, because it was given that they use non-prescription antidepressants, which was the 44%. I end up with 0.5. I'm going to put two decimal places, so I'm going to use 0 0.50. Should take it the other way, but just in case. <laughs> Second part of that, what is the probability that a randomly selected adult who visited a therapist during the past year also used non-prescription antidepressants? That one's a trickier one because it doesn't say the word given in there, right? But it's given that they visited a therapist, we want to find the ones that use the non-prescription antidepressants. So the top number is going to be our 22%. The bottom number is the percent who visited the therapist. If in doubt, it should be the opposite of the other one. <laughs> So when I divide that out to two decimal places, I get 